All right, this is question number six from the 2014 Calc BC exam, and it is a series question. Um, so what we're given is this summation, and we're asked to do some stuff with it. So the uh, first thing we need to do is find the uh, value of r, where r is the radius of convergence. So find radius of convergence. That is a ratio test type of thing. So what we do is we uh, just plug in n plus 1. So we're going to find the n plus first term. And then we have to multiply that by the reciprocal of the nth term. So we have this. And, okay, so that's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of... So if you look, uh, we have negative 1 to the n plus 2 over negative 1 to the n plus 1. So that's just negative 1 to the first. Uh, we have 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n, which is just 2. We have x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over x minus 1 to the n, which is just the quantity x minus 1. We still have an n, and we still have an n plus 1 in the denominator. And uh, when you take this limit, the negative 1 disappears because of the absolute value. Um, the 2, uh, 2n over n plus 1 has a limit of 2, and then you still have an absolute value of x minus 1. Uh, so that's what we get by doing the ratio test. We know from the ratio test that the series will converge. Um, anytime what we just got, so anytime uh, 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1, which means that uh, the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 half, and that's the value of r. So therefore, r is equal to 1 half. All right, so that's not so bad, just a little bit of uh, algebra, really. and Well, and some limits and some understanding, but uh, mostly just algebra. Uh, so the next thing we want to do, we need to find the first three non-zero terms and the general term of the Taylor series for f prime, which is the derivative of f. So what I'm going to do is I don't really like summations all that much. Um, so what I'm going to do is write out some terms of f of x. I'll write out enough terms of f of x and then just take the derivative. So the first term of f of x, I plug in 1 for n, and I end up with uh, 2 over 1, which is 2, times uh, the quantity x minus 1 to the first. And now I'm going to plug in 2, which gives me negative 2 squared over 2, x minus 1 to the second. And then I'm going to plug in 3. So that gives me 2 cubed over 3, the quantity x minus 1 cubed. And uh, so thinking about it, I need to take derivatives. Uh, none of those will vanish when I take derivatives, so that'll give me three non-zero terms of the derivative. So I'm just going to do plus dot dot dot, plus, and then the general term. So this is uh, f of x when you expand it out. So summations sometimes are a little confusing, but when you start expanding them, they're not confusing at all. Um, so now to find f prime of x, what I do is term by term differentiation. So if I take the derivative of that, I am left with 2. If I take the derivative of this, I am left with minus 2 squared x minus 1 to the first. If I take the derivative of this, I'm left with 2 cubed x minus 1 squared. Um, so that's three non-zero terms, which is what I needed, plus dot, dot, dot. Now I need to take the derivative of this. So the only variable here is x. So uh, the derivative of x minus 1 to the n is n times x minus 1 to the n minus 1. So uh, I have the original coefficient, bring down the n, simplify a little bit, and I end up with negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n uh, times x minus 1 to the n minus 1 plus dot dot dot. So that's three non-zero terms and the general term. Um, I do want to note here, if you go back to the original function that I wrote out um, and plug 1 in, you just get 0, right? Uh, you get 2 times 0 minus everything is just times 0. So f of 1 is 0, and that's going to be important in the next part because we're going to need to uh, do some integration and solve for c, and we're going to need that to solve for c. So the next part, um, I'm going to start with f prime, the series that I got in the previous part, which it tells me to do. It tells me that this is actually a geometric series, uh, which I probably could have figured out on my own, but they told me, and that's awesome. Um, so what I need to do is find the function that f prime uh, converges to on the interval of convergence. So it's geometric. So f prime is going to be the first term, which is 2, over 1 minus the ratio. So to figure out the ratio, uh, you can think hard about it. You can look at the general term, or you can actually just uh, notice that to go from the first term to the second term, you have to multiply by negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1, and then that pattern continues. So to go from the second to the third, again, you'd multiply by negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1, and so on. So r is actually negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1. So I'm going to plug that in there. I'm going to simplify this. 
into 2 over 2x minus 1, and then this applies uh, when the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 half. So that's my uh, function that I get for f prime. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to use the function to figure out what f is. So this is going to be the function that the original series was written for. So I'm just going to use integration, right? Because you go from f prime to f, you integrate. So f of x should be the integral of 2 over 2x minus 1 dx. Uh, this is actually, if you let u equal 2x minus 1, du is just 2 dx. So this is going to become the natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 1, and then plus c. Uh, now I need to solve for c, but if you remember uh, in the previous part, I made a note that f of 1 was equal to 0. So if f of 1 is equal to 0, that means that 0 uh, is equal to the natural log of 2 uh, minus 1, which is 0. So you get 0 equals 0 plus c, so c is equal to 0, which means that f of x, the function that I'm looking for, is the natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 1, where the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 half. Um, you can actually, uh, 2x minus 1 is actually greater than 0 on the entire interval, uh, so you kind of don't need the absolute values, but I'm going to leave them there. Uh, they're not really hurting anything. Uh, so that is the entire problem. Uh, I think solving for C might have been the hardest part of this. Uh, I also think if you chose to leave it as a summation instead of writing out the terms, you made it a little harder for yourself. Uh, you pretty much always want to write out the terms, use term-by-term -term differentiation or anti-derivatives, um, and go from there. But anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.